good morning students so today we are going to start our next uh, topic and that is uh, electron uh, transport chain or electron transport system the another name of electron transport chain is also oxidative phosphorylation as you have studied in my previous uh, lectures about a uh, glycolysis and a uh, krebs cycle so what we observed in these that from glycolysis we get a net gain of 2 atps and from the krebs cycle we generally obtain 36 atps so as a result the total number of atps that we obtained from the process of respiration is a 38 atps so all of these atps they are actually generated when the oxidation of the energy rich molecules such as nadh and fadh it takes place to a special type of metabolic process that occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane known as a creste and this metabolic process is known as electron transport chain so in today's topic i am going to tell you that how the transfer of the electrons which are actually released from the these energy rich molecules after their oxidation how these electrons they transfer to various electron acceptors and in the last they come in contact with atp synthase enzyme and in this way atps they are generally produced by them so the entire process it happens in the inner mitochondrial membrane called cresta and this process is called electron transport chain okay let us uh, start the electron uh, transport chain so first of all all of you know very well that in the krebs cycle which is also known as the tca cycle we obtained some energy rich molecules such as nadh2 fadh2 and gtp gtp here means guanosine triphosphate and you know that these nadh2 and fadh2 they have huge amount of energy that is present in them so when these energy rich molecules such as nadh2 and fadh2 they are oxidized through this electron transport system then during this process the removal of the hydrogen atoms takes place and you know that whenever hydrogen comes from these molecules they always release in the form of protons so in order to satisfy the valency the same number of electrons they are also released so here i want to tell you that energy is stored in these nadh2 and fadh2 molecule and now this energy has to be released so that the plants they can use this energy for other metabolic activities of their cells so for this purpose this nadh2 and fadh2 they are oxidized and the process is called electron transport system and as i have already discussed that during this process there is a step wise removal of protons along with some electrons that's its number is equivalent to the number of protons so these protons they are finally accepted by the oxygen molecule and as a result water molecule it is formed at the last of electron transport system that's why the process is also called as oxidative phosphorylation because we generally use the term phosphorylation for the synthesis of energy rich molecules and oxidative here concerned with the presence of oxygen which generally shows its main role at the terminal uh, stage where the protons they are finally accepted by this molecule oxygen molecule and as a result water is produced as a by product in the process of a respiration okay student so what happened the metabolic pathway which is known as electron transport chain it actually happens in the inner mitochondrial membrane and that is known as a cresta so these electrons which are released when this energy rich molecules nadh2 and fadh2 they are oxidized so these electrons they are passes from one carrier to another so this process which is electron transport chain so what happened first of all the oxidation of nadh molecule it takes place 
and you know that this nadh molecule it uh, comes from the krebs cycle and it is present in the mitochondrial matrix and from this mitochondrial matrix it is later transfer uh, to the inner membrane of the mitochondria which is known as uh, kriste and as a result its oxidation uh, takes place and during this oxidation process an enzyme is involved and that enzyme is known as the nadh dehydrogenase enzyme so this nadh dehydrogenase enzyme here act as complex 1 so what happen the electrons that are released during the nadh oxidation they are later comes in contact with uh, this nadh dehydrogenase enzyme and this nadh dehydrogenase enzyme it transfer these electrons to an another molecule and that is known as a ubiquinone so this a uh, ubiquinone it is located in the inner membrane of the mitochondria which is uh, called a crest crest so this ubiquinone not only receives the electrons that are coming from nadh but they also receive the electrons from the other energy rich molecule and that is fadh2 so the release of electrons from this fadh2 it is done by another enzyme which form complex 2 and this enzyme is the succinate dehydrogenase enzyme so where from where this fadh2 molecule it is Uh, present in the cresta so this fadh2 molecule it also comes from the krebs cycle during the oxidation of uh, succinic acid to malic acid this fadh2 molecule is formed and later the electrons they are released from this fadh2 molecule and it is uh, received by this ubiquinone now what happen because of addition of electrons that are coming uh, from this nadh2 and the other set of electrons that uh, comes from fadh2 when they are received by this ubiquinone the ubiquinone it later reduced and in order to oxidize itself the ubiquinone it transfer its electron to another molecule and that is cytochrome c and this cytochrome c it receive these electrons but with the help of a uh, complex which generally helps in the transfer of electron and that is known as a cytochrome bc1 complex so this means complex 3 is a cytochrome bc1 complex now i want to tell you the structure of a cytochrome so here cytochrome c it is a small protein and it is attached to the outer surface of the inner membrane of mitochondria and what is its role actually so it act as a mobile a carrier for the transfer of electrons between complex 3 to complex 4 so what is complex 4 complex 4 here refers to cytochrome c oxidase enzyme and this cytochrome c oxidase enzyme it generally contains cytochrome a cytochrome a3 and two copper centers as they are components so when the electrons they are passed from one energy carrier or you can say one uh, electron carrier to another by a complex 1 to complex 4 in the electron a uh, transport chain then what happen they are finally coupled with the atp synthase enzyme and that atp synthase enzyme is the complex 5 and when these electrons they come in contact with atp uh, synthase enzyme then what happen the activation of atp synthase enzyme takes place and it results in the production of adp from adp and inorganic phosphate now as you know very well the number of the atp molecules that can be synthesized by this atp synthase enzyme it actually depends upon the nature of the electron bond so if oxidation of one molecule of nadh takes place then it gives three molecules of atp and if one molecule of fadh2 is oxidized then it gives a two molecules of atp now as we know the aerobic process of respiration it takes place only in the presence of oxygen so here the role of oxygen it is limited to the terminal stage of the process 
yet the presence of oxygen is very vital for the whole process by removing hydrogen from the system so oxygen here act as the final hydrogen acceptor so this process is also known as oxidative phosphorylation because as we have studied in photosynthesis in photophosphorylation what is the criteria here the light energy is used and with the help of this light energy production of proton gradient it is it actually uh, takes place and that proton gradient is actually established on the inner surface of the thylakoid membrane but here in case of respiration it is uh, quite uh, different because what happen in case of uh, respiration here also a proton uh, gradient it get established but it generally formed on the inner surface of the mito the mitochondrial inner membrane crysta so where the protons they locate themselves as the electrons uh, they are actually received by these electron receptors and finally all of these electrons they come in contact with the complex number 5 and that is atp synthase enzyme so these electrons they are generally involved in the activation of the atp molecule so that energy is produced so on that accumulation of uh, protons on the inner surface of the crystal what happen these protons they want to cross the inner membrane of that is crystal but they are not allowed to do so so what they do as you know complex 5 which is atp synthase enzyme it is located it is located on the inner membrane of the mitochondria so as you know atp synthase enzyme has a two component that is f0 and f1 so its f0 part it is embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria called the crystal whereas its outer part which is actually known as f1 part so this f1 part it is projected outside the inner membrane of the mitochondria so at one time two protons they enters into the f0 part and during their entry what happen they release certain amount of energy and that is used for the activation of atp synthase enzyme and these protons finally enters into the f1 particle and they are released from the f1 particle and in this way one atp molecule is generated from the removal of two h plus ions and this atp molecule is generated with the help of adp and inorganic phosphate so in this way in our electron transport chain the electrons its a transfer takes place from different kind of electron acceptors and these electrons they finally reaches complex 5 which is atp synthase initially they comes in contact with so many complexes as you know in complex 1 we have the enzyme nadh dehydrogenase in complex 2 we have the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase so the release of electron from nadh it takes place with the help of complex 1 that is nadh dehydrogenase and the removal of electrons from the fadh2 molecule it takes place with the help of electron uh, second uh, complex and that complex is known as succinate dehydrogenase enzyme then both of these electrons they reaches ubiquinone and there the reduction of the ubiquinone takes place and there is a third complex involved and that is cytochrome bc1 complex and this cytochrome bc1 uh, complex it is quite helpful uh, to transfer the electrons to cytochrome so in this way complex 3 uh, completes then these electrons they comes in contact with the complex 4 and finally they comes in contact with the complex 5 so complex 4 here is a cytochrome c oxidase and complex 5 is atp synthase enzyme so how the atp is they are generated with the help of this atp synthase enzyme its answer is again uh, given by the theory which we have studied in chapter photosynthesis that is chemi osmotic hypothesis so what chemi osmotic hypothesis states here that uh, on the inner surface of the in our mitochondrial membrane that is a crysta the proton gradient it get established and these proton uh, gradients they finally comes in contact with complex 5 which is actually atp synthase enzyme having two components 
F0 and F1 and they want to go outside from the crystal membrane. So they take the help of this F0, F1 particles, which are actually the components of the ATP synthesis. So at one time, two protons, they enter into F0 particle. They release certain amount of energy and because of this, the activation of ATP synthesis enzyme takes place. And now these uh, protons, they enter into F1 particle and from uh, this F1 particle, they go outside. So in this way, on the entry of two H plus ions, one molecule of ATP, it is produced. And as a result, in the last, we obtain how many ATP molecules? 36 ATP molecules. And what about uh, protons? So I have already uh, discussed these protons. They are finally accepted by the oxygen molecule and they react with the oxygen molecule and form water. So as a result, in the last of the respiration, we obtain six molecules of carbon dioxide and 12 molecules of water along with large amount of energy. And this large amount of energy here is 36 ATPs. So in this way, the process of electron uh, transport chain, it actually completes. So here in this diagram, I have shown you the component of the ATP synthesis enzyme that is a complex uh, five. So in this way, the proton uh, gradient, it gets established on the inner surface of inner mitochondrial membrane called cresta and two protons, they enter into the ATP synthesis enzymes, F0 particle, and finally removed from the F1 particle and as a result, one ATP molecule, it is finally uh, synthesized. So here I have written the structure of the ATP synthesis enzyme. ATP synthesis also called F0, F1 ATPase is the universal protein that terminates oxidative phosphorylation by synthesizing ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So this ATP synthase is one of the most important enzyme that is found in the mitochondria of the cell. Yes, student, uh, today, we will, uh, today we have to complete uh, this topic that is electron transport chain and after this we will start the a uh, common topic that is respiratory balance sheet but we will not start it uh, today in our upcoming lecture we will study about this so that's all in uh, today's lecture please uh, go through the uh, calvin's uh, go through this uh, cycle that is tca cycle and uh, this respiratory uh, electron transport chain if you have doubt then send me the doubts that's all in today's lecture have a nice